So as I go through, I just want you to touch uh, any card that you like. And so in this case, you've got the, uh, let's say, the Three of Diamonds. Now notice I'm being very clever here. You're focusing on the Three of Diamonds, and I'm just going to pull back that Four of Diamonds. But no one's going to pay attention to that because we're right here. But now as I come back here, you get to see that Three of Diamonds go right there in the center of the pack. Couldn't be any clearer, right? Now which one of you has a magic word that you want to give me? Really, really important. Magic word. Excellent. She says the magic word. And that card, which loves you so much, comes to the top. Because we got that break one card back, we brought that to the second from the top, and now we are in position to go into any kind of ambitious phase that we already want, which is another one of those wonderful bennies of having already taught you that robust lesson on the uh, double lift and turnovers that you already know exactly what I'm talking about. But that's just to say that no matter what the application, when you're just learning the... Uh, Herman Pass, and you got that shallow grip with the right hand where you're, where you're just here. You're not deep into it like I might teach you on the half pass, or I might teach you if you're close up on the uh, Herman Pass, which you'll want to learn later. And you're not doing that real sweet gravity half pass drop, but you're doing the traditional pull with your fingers thing. You can always do it from up here. Show what you're trying to show. You got this wonderful gaze. Inhale, and then relax. Turn around, come over here, and you can do the whole trick from there. Now, once you've started to practice that, once you're really comfortable with that, you're going to be ready to add the next layers of it, which are those things that I just spoke about. So in this case, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what the higher reaches are of that, uh, of that practice so that you have an idea of what we're talking about, and then um, and you'll know what I'm talking about there. So what I'm saying here is <clears throat> when I'm up here, when I'm close, when I'm either in close quarters or not in close quarters, when you're further away, I need more cover. And so at that point, instead of grabbing here, I'm going to grab closer to here. My first finger is going to contact at the second joint right up there. That's going to give my second finger all of this space way down. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. Look at how much space that gives me. You're not going to see nothing now when we do that, right? When I'm here, you're just not going to see nothing. I got cover. And as we're going to talk about next month in Pathways, you know, that's why people don't see anything when we do the gravity half pass either. Look at all that. Or that's not the only reason. But it's certainly related to it. We got a lot of cover coming from there. So that's harder to do. There's less space in between the deck and your hand and takes time to get comfortable with, which is one of the reasons I'm asking you to learn with more space up here. Give yourself more space and then close it down once you're comfortable and you can put more weight on the machine, right? Makes sense. Now let's talk about the left fingers. Similar situation. Up until now, you've been doing yanking. But when you get good at this and when you start to get groovy with it, you want to learn how to hold those cards at that 45 degree angle as we've always discussed. And as you come down and lift up a little bit, you want that pinky to do less and less. You want that pinky just to kick. And if you just let that pinky kick, look, bam, it levers. And those fingers, they don't move nearly as much. So you got a deep grip. You got that nice space to the right because it's a deep grip. You've got a whole lot of your right palm there exposed. And so what's going to happen is deep grip and a little kick, boom, allows you to get all of that cover. And of course, I'm once again not working for the video screen because I like working for people. I'll work for the video screen, right? But with all that, they could be nice and far away, right in front of you the whole time in that nice close-up position we all like. And you're going to be able to get away with that like beautifully. And once again, the big... Um, lesson there that I'm always teaching students is you can learn magic a lot more effectively if you let the stages develop one at a time as they develop. Instead of demanding that you learn the expert version immediately, learn the first version, get comfortable with it, learn to fool people with it, learn to build it into your effect, then later add those details that make it better. Don't be afraid of that practice process. That's why becoming a real expert at these heavy moves takes years because you have to learn them in stages, just like life.